That is why the Bible says, let us make man in our own image. Which image? It is the image of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That yes. even before Jesus became a creation, it was because of Nur al-Muhammadiyah. That is why Christ became a creation. Other than that, God wouldn't have created Jesus. Even before Jesus became a creation, it was because of Nur al-Muhammadiyah. That is why Christ became a creation. Other than that, God wouldn't have created Jesus. Hey! Insha'Allah. It is important to know that when Allah wanted to begin his creations, when there was nothing in nothing, then he has not created the heavens, the earth, everything in everything that is hayatul uh yahutu that is when allah Azawajalla removed his light when he removed his light and then he used the light to create muhammad that is why he's called the nurul nurullah in quran 5 verse 15 he's mentioned as nurullah then this light is divided into four now when the light was divided into four then they use one to create um the tablet and the pen and then the, the column then allah commanded the column to create uh, to write everything that will happen on the face of this planet now after that they use the other light to create the arsh of allah the arsh of allah the arsh of allah is bigger than everything even the kursi then the other light was used to create the angels who are carrying the light of allah then this light is left with one then it is also divided into four <laughs> Even, that's why the bible says let us make man in our own image which image it is the image of prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that yes. even before jesus became a creation it was because of Nur al-Muhammadiyah. That is why Christ became a creation. Other than that, God wouldn't have created Jesus. Even before Jesus became a creation, it was because of Nur al-Muhammadiyah. That is why Christ became a creation. Other than that, God wouldn't have created Jesus. Hey! <laughs> oh my, oh my God, oh my God. Hey, Allah, oh my God. Hey! Oh no 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 Allah balu baga kura baru wa too much Even, that is why the Bible says, let us make man in our own image. Which image? It is the image of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That is, even before Jesus became a creation. It was because of Nur al-Muhammadiyah. That is why Christ became a creation. Other than that, God wouldn't have created Jesus. Even before Jesus became a creation. It was because of Nur al-Muhammadiyah. That is why Christ became a creation. Other than that, God wouldn't have created Jesus. Man, like I said, ever since God guided me, no wise person on earth has ever insulted me. I repeat, ever since God guided me, no wise person on earth has ever, ever insulted me. Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen, peace be upon you all. <laughs> uh, thank you all for coming. I just decided to put the comedy for a while. Uh, it, it's just mind boggling, you know. <laughs> this one, this one is Ghana for. Yeah, Bora Bora. Yeah, he calls me Phil. Uh, he says Finland, but for he is Ghana, but for it's better to be madman in Finland than to be madman in Ghana. <laughs> hey. Oh, no, 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 no. <clears throat> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. Uh, yeah, Nazir and and NSA, yes, I will. I will I don't know if you have the link, but I would I will send you the link, or oh, then you can get access to that, right? Yeah. 
<clears throat> Abdul Rashid Banzi says, "Is today I know people don't know anything. Yeah, you'll find out more." Aha, Shahad Idris, yeah, salam, welcome. Ali Jari Jari, I see you, welcome. Uh, Masbahul Islam, Muhammad Kamal Deen, I see you. Uh, I see you all, salam, Biggie, hope oh, great. Uh, Rock Silva, I see you, I see all of you, peace be upon you. Uh, Vora Vora, yes, I'm doing good, peace be upon you. Yeah, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. Mm, as you all know, can call me Baba Shribe, aka the correctional officer. Yes, I am the correctional officer against the mushriks. I'm the guy who make the mushriks stress out. I make them confused and stress out. I am the one who make them expose their ignorance. Right? So you are welcome to my page, Baba Shribe, the correctional officer. And make sure you follow and subscribe to my page. Uh, uh, let me put it here uh my youtube i have a youtube page and also my page on facebook which is the correctional officer so this is my youtube page down there bush 2g9 if you set me on youtube youtube you get all my lectures there concerning salat so concerning hajj concerning zakat concerning uh siam anything you want to know about islam i have the lectures there right so it's there audio basiru yes you're welcome salam uh lamin kubu salam alaikum uh, I see all of you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, today's topic is about uh, God's teaching versus the teaching of men, right? <clears throat> uh, Abdul Rashid says, I have a question. Lauhu, Lauhu. You wrote Lauh. Lauhu, or are you talking about what are you trying to ask me? Okay, let, let me focus on the topic for now because it's not time for questions and answers. I'll open the phone lines. If you have a question and answer, you can call, then you ask, or you type it, and I'll respond to that, inshallah, right? Uh -huh. So I'll open the phone lines uh, later on. Then you can uh, send me a message. I will answer you, inshallah, right? Uh -huh. Thank you all for coming. Just pay attention to the topic of today, right? It is God's teaching versus the teaching of men and we are going to break it down in order to see <clears throat> but before i go on i'm going to quote chapter 3 verse uh, 79 and let's see if i can share the screen uh chapter 3 verse 79 uh let me let me see uh just a second chapter 3 verse 79 i try to share the screen and show <clears throat> yeah Chapter 3, verse 79. Right? It says, Baraz Billahi Mina Shaitan Rajim. After seeking refuge with God, it says, Makana li basharin, an yutiya hullahul kitaba wal hukma, wal nubu wata, thumma yakula li nas kunu ibadan li mindunin lahi, walakin kunu rabbani yina. Bima kuntum tu alimun al kitab, wa bima kuntum tadru soon. Right? Good. Aha. Uh -huh. So, ma kan ali bashari. Uh, we know the Prophet is a bashar, he's a human being. Right? Just like he says in Quran chapter 18, verse 110, Kul innama ana basharu mithlukum yuha ilayya, annama ilahukum ilahun wahid. Chapter 18, verse 110. So he says, I'm a human like you. I'm a human like you, right? So God says, it is not for a man that God has given him the book or God should give him the book, al-kitab, right? Al-kitab. Wal-hukma, and then the what? Governance, that's the judgment. Wal-hukma, not hikma. There's the difference between hikma and hukma, even though they share the same root word, right? But there's a difference. Wal hukuma wal nubuwatan nubuwatan is the act of prophethood, right? Prophethood. So it is not for a man that God should give him the book, the judgment, and the prophethood. Then thumma yakula nas. Then he will say to the people, kunu ibadan li mindun illahi. Become servants, my servants, besides God or other than God or besides God. 
Walakin, however, or but, kunu rabbani yina bima kuntum tu alimuna li kitab, wa bima kuntum tadurusun. However, become spiritual leaders, that is rabbani yina, which we can say rabbis, to be become a spiritual leader for the people, right? So become spiritual leaders, bima kuntum tu alimuna li kitab. Right? Bima, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Haj Londo. Bima kuntum uh, to alimun al kitab. By what you have been taught of the book, you should become a spiritual leader by what you have been taught of the al kitab that was given to the Prophet. Wabima kuntum tadurusun. And by what you have studied or you have been studying. Nadira kuna kuo. Uh -huh. So, chapter 3, verse 79 is breaking down this instance for you. Salam, uh, Liman Imrana. Uh -huh. It's breaking down this instance for you. So, it is not for a man that God should give him the book, Al-Kitab, and the Hukuma, the judgment, and Nubuwatan and the prophethood. Then he will say to the people, be my servant, just like the Mushriks always do. They keep worshipping Muhammad wherever they go. Wherever they, they meet in the mosque, in the gathering, they say Salatu ala Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Always worshipping Muhammad. But if you tell them they are worshipping, they will argue. They will tell you, no, I hey, it's not a worship. We are only sending blessings upon him. Are you a fool? You and the Prophet, who deserve to send blessings upon the other? Is it the prophet who is rather supposed to send blessings upon you or you send him blessings? Or it's just like common sense to understand what God is commanding you. Do you see the point? Uh -huh. So now, there is no way God ever asks you to send blessings upon the prophet. No, he never asks you to do that. Unless you are misunderstanding chapter 33 verse 56 where he says, In Allah wa malaikatahu, you saw Luna. Uh -huh. The kids are trying to get on my nerves. They are shouting so much here. Hey, Nadira, Kubarkuwa Udo, Salim. Kuna Kuwa Nachi, Kubari. Aha. So, <clears throat> yeah, Salam, uh, Rahina Ibrahim. So, based on the verse I just read, the, the main point, the main emphasis I want to base is based on the teaching. What you have studied and what you have been taught. Now, when we went for our academics in school, whether elementary, whether high school, whether uh, university, whether tertiary level, whatever you have been taught is whatever you go home and study. It's the same thing you are going home to study. You will not be taught how to cook, then you go home and learn and, and study how to swim. If you are taught how to cook in school, when you go home, you what? You study how to cook. Then you come back as a learned person. That is how knowledge works, right? Uh -huh. So now, based on the chapter 3, verse 79, I quoted, right? What we need to understand is there is no way a God will send a prophet, right? And give him the book and the judgment and prophethood to come to the people. And then he will now come and tell the people, be my servants. No, no. Remember, the deen is not for the prophet. Neither is the book of God for the prophet. The Quran doesn't belong to Prophet Muhammad. Neither does Islam belong to Prophet Muhammad. He came and met it and he was sent with it. So he will leave it and go. <laughs> it is not his property. He is a passenger, a passerby. You will be a fool to think the religion belongs to Prophet Muhammad. So now to make this simple for you, Quran chapter 18 verse 110. Quran chapter 18 verse 110. Let's see what it says there. I'm going to share the screen, then we see what the verse says. Quran chapter 18, verse 110. Right? Let's see what it says. It says, Kul innama ana basharun, mithlukum yuha ilayya annama ilahukun ilahun wahid. Faman kana yarju likaha rabbi fali amal, amalan salihan, wala yishiruku bi ibadatihi rabbi ahada. Right? Eh, salam, Abba, Shubha, Nagankaw, salam. Uh -huh. So, chapter 18, verse 110, clearly tells us, is the messenger is saying, Kul, inna ma ana basharun mislukum yuha ilayya. I am only a human like you to whom has been inspired 
annama ilahukum ilahun wahid that your god is one god that is your deity right yeah salam uh, uh young breezy uh saeed adam i see you salam sorry ladies and gentlemen sorry Guys, they are making noise. They are loud. Oh, Hey, you are you are you are you are you are you are Kubarukua. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I had to deal with the kids because if I don't try to bribe them with something, I will not get the chance to continue. Yeah. So Quran chapter 18, verse 110, it clearly tells us, it's instructing the messenger to say, Innama anabasharu mithlukum yuha ilayya annama ilahukum ilahun wahid. Then he says, For man kana yaruju lika rabbi falyamala amala salihan, wala yushiriku bi ibadati rabbi ahada. Right? So he says, I'm a human like you, to whom has been inspired that your God is one God. Right? Hey, salam, wise G, you're welcome. Uh... <laughs> uh, Abu Bakr Muhammad Tijani, I, I wish so too, but I'm using English because it's, it's, the, it's the official language in Ghana. So I guess that is the best I can do. I speak Hausa, I speak Tree, I speak Ga, but you know, I cannot divide myself all, all, <laughs> all over, right? Uh -huh. So that's the best I can do. Uh, Salam, my sister Rashida Muhammad. Uh, I see you. Uh -huh. So. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope great says father won't teach kids won't play. Yeah, that's it. The kids want to play. <laughs> Anyways, uh -huh, so we can see clearly the messenger is saying, I'm a human like you, to whom has been inspired that your God is one God. Then he says, So whoever is expecting to meet his Lord, then let him act righteous deeds right righteous deeds and should not associate any uh, anything in the, anyone in the worship of his god lord his lord you shouldn't associate anyone in the the worship of god right so that is why it says in quran chapter 98 verse 5 it says zakat <laughs> Then he says, Wazalika Dina Lukayima. Right? So Mawama Umiru illa liyabudullah. They have not been mandated except to what? To serve or worship God. Mukhlisina lahu dina hunafa. Sincerely devoting the religion to him. That is octodously, truthfully, up to standard, acceptable, right? Hunafa, which comes from the word like which is same as Hanifa, right? Uh -huh, which Prophet Abraham alayhi salam was. So when you came with salat and then establish the salat, when you to zakat and then give the zakat, was zalika dinu lukayima. And that is the valuable religion or we say the upright religion. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So when we deal with this instance, we get to understand what our service to God is. When it comes to the act of worship, you don't include anybody in the worship. Not even Muhammad, not even anybody. Put it away. Deal with God alone. You are here for God. You are not here for anybody else. It is out of the foolishness of some scholars who tell you the heaven and earth was created because of Prophet Muhammad. If they say that, tell them to give you one verse which says that. You can see how stupid the scholars can be when they don't have the evidence to give you. Right? Mm -hmm. Now let's continue. So now I only use <clears throat> the, the couple of verses as a prop to, to, the, to the main scenario or issue I want to discuss. 
If you go to Quran chapter 2, verse 282, God mentioned a, a phrase there. He mentioned a phrase by pulling our attention. Huh? He says, He says, Wattakullaha wa yu'allimukumullah. He says, beware of God. That is, have the fear, piety for God, right? You have to be pious for God. So beware of God and what? Where you allimukumullah and God will teach you. Now, <clears throat> you know, there's a saying which says the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge or wisdom. So when you have the piety between you and God, then God can now teach you because you are willing to understand what God is telling you. So that is why Quran chapter 2 verse 2 says, Zalik al -kitabu la fi hudan takin. says that is the book wherein there is no doubt as guidance for the pious. Right? That is the book wherein there is no doubt as guidance for the pious. So when you are dealing with the book of God, it is teaching you how to become a pious person. So that is guidance. So you start following what God is telling you without mixing the, the words of men inside. So you concentrate on what God is telling you, right? So he says, what Have the fear of God, beware of God, and God will teach you. So whoever wants God to teach God to teach him, he has to adhere to what God is commanding. You understand? Uh -huh. So now let's go on. So we are going to see the teaching of God compared to the teaching of men. Whose teaching are we supposed to uphold? Now, <clears throat> what you need to understand is you as a human being, when you were given birth to, before you were born, when you were born, you came to this world knowing nothing, right? When you were born to this earth, you came to this earth knowing nothing. So in Quran chapter uh, 16, verse 78, Quran chapter 16, verse 78 this is what it says clearly to us it says wallahu akharajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'an ah god brought you out of the bellies of your mothers knowing you knowing nothing you do not know anything when he brought you out right then he says wa ja'ala lakumul sam'a wal absara wal af'idat Afidata. Then he says, La tashkurun. So then he made for you the hearing, the eyesight, and then the what? The mind. Right? Afidat. Some people will translate it as the heart. It's not an organ. So I don't translate it as heart. It's the mind because the mind is connected with the heart and the brain together to give you the feeling of what you need to understand. Then he says, La allakum tashkurun. So that you may be what? Grateful or thankful. So when he brought you out as a baby, you knew nothing. It is now you have to start lifestyle, copying people's culture, tradition, way of life, beliefs. You understand? So you hear people say, Alhamdulillah, I was born a Muslim. No, nothing like that. You don't lie to yourself. When you were born, you are ignorant. You didn't know anything. So you just adapted what your family were doing. So if you were born in the house of atheists, you might likely become an atheist. If you're born in the house of the Buddhists, you might likely become a Buddhist. If unless if you use your intelligence, your IQ to question things, then you start ch changing your own path. You see how it works. Good. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Yeah, thank you, uh, Rayuna Ibrahim. Uh -huh, so we continue. So upon that, you coming out of the bellies of your mothers knowing nothing, now God wants you to know something. So Quran chapter 17 verse 36 says wala taqfu ma laysa laka bi il inna as-sama'a wal basara wal fu'ada kullu ulaika kana anahu mas'ula He says do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge right if you don't have knowledge about something don't pursue it you will be a fool to follow something blindly this is why you need to ask critical questions in order to be enlightened right so in the sama'a indeed the hearing wal basara wal and the eyesight wal fu'ad and the mind all those will be accountable thereof or are questionable thereof. Mas'ula, that is sa'ala, to ask a question, right? A questioner. So all those will be accountable or questionable or, or answerable thereof, right? So now as a human being, 
you need to use the these organs and the sense of uh the the hearing the eye uh, the seeing and then the mind to comprehend things around you you have to ask questions shawag mahmoud salam you need to ask questions you don't just get up and follow things blindly so this is why critically sometimes when i'm saying some things to people they find it weird because they've never heard it before meanwhile it is in the same book they've been upholding for years right so when I, they hear me saying it they think i'm saying something new it's nothing new i'm only telling you what god says yours is just to take the same book next to you and study so that you get the answers there simple now so that is there's the tip of the iceberg so the topic starts with chapter 55 that is suratul ar-rahman chapter 55 verse 1 to verse 4 then i share the screen let's see what the verses say concerning uh that verse right chapter 55 and then i take you to verse 1 to verse 4 right and let's see what it says uh mubarak obeys yeah salam uh shuag mahmoud says how do you explain 331 yeah he's talking about the messenger right if you if you love god follow me huh? so if you love god follow then follow the messenger he's talking about the messenger so you have to connect the context to verse 32 you get the answer there it's about the messenger if you follow the messenger yes but it's not talking about the prophet understand the difference so quran chapter 55 verse 1 to verse 4 it says ar rahman allam al quran khalaq al insan allamahu al bayan the gracious right the gracious ar rahman allam al quran he taught what the quran because the quran is is his book he, the book belonged to him right quran chapter 10 verse 37 tells us that وما كان هذا القران ان يفترى من دون الله ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل الكتاب لا ريب فيه من رب العالمين right so quran chapter 10 verse 37 testifies and tells you that the quran comes from god and it cannot be invented by anybody else except god right so quran chapter 55 verse 1 to verse 4 says ar rahman the gracious allama al quran he taught the quran Khalakali insan, he created the human being or he creates the human being. Allamahu al-bayan and he taught him the what? The declaration. He taught the human being the declaration, right? Uh -huh. So you coming out of the belly of your mothers knowing nothing, he God, since he brought you to the earth, he has to now teach you something. So this is why when you have babies, you have a kid, they know how to, to suck their mothers, to suckle from their mother's breast. They know how to crawl. They will know how to do certain things, laugh and cry. And you understand, these are all inspired by God and how he teaches the human being certain things we never knew before. So by time, you will find that a father will give back to a child and the child will know certain things that the father has no idea about. Now, like, where did you get this from? How did you know this? You'll be surprised. So this is why we can perceive when kids are endowed with wisdom. We can see it. When they are endowed with knowledge and talent, we can see it and perceive it. So that is when we have to appreciate what God has done for us. So Ar-Rahman, Allah al Quran, he taught the Quran. He taught who? We all knew, we all know that he, he revealed the Quran to Muhammad as a human being who knew nothing. Right? And he taught him. So I'm going to take you through the processes to show you how the Quran was taught to the prophet and how it got to us, right? So Quran chapter 55, verse 1 to verse 4, we've seen that God is the one who what, taught the Quran and he creates the human being and he teaches the human being or he taught the human being elucidation, declaration, uh, clarification. He, he taught the human being that, right? So now when a knowledge has been passed down unto you, after endowing you being you being endowed with such knowledge you can now pass it on to others you see how it works so quran chapter 96 verse 1 to verse 5 again let me show you what this verse says quran chapter 96 verse 1 to verse 5 quran chapter 96 verse 1 to verse 5 yeah then I will share the screen for you. Then we see what, what happens. 
let me share. Quran chapter 96, verse 1 to verse 5. Right? Yes. So he says, Ekra bismi rabbika lazi khalak. Khalak al insana min alak. Ekra rabbika la akram. Allazi allama bil kalam. Allama al insana ma'alam yalam. So read, in the name of your Lord, who creates? He creates the human being from what? Thrombus or blood clot. Read, and your Lord is the most honorable, right? The one who thought by the pen. He thought who? He thought the human being. And who is that? He thought Muhammad, alayhi salam. Because it's impossible for you to read something which is not written down. If it has to do with a written work or a book. It has to be written down, right? So he wrote it down. So God taught him by the pen. So God is going to finalize the statement by saying, He taught the human being what he knew not. So meaning, Muhammad never knew how to read and write. God taught him now how to read and write. So he has to write before reading. So this is why the first verse, chapter 96, verse 1 says, read. It doesn't say recite. It says read. When you are reciting, it is from the memory and your head. But when you are reading, it is something you have written down. So this is why verse 4 says, the one who taught by the pen. Because God taught Muhammad by the pen. You'll be a fool to think Muhammad read the book without it being written down. Yeah. So now we can see chapter 96, verse 1 to verse 5, that he has been taught how to read and write. That is how to write and read. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So the evidence is clear. You'll be a fool to think Muhammad doesn't know how to write. Yes, I repeat, you'll be a fool, the biggest fool to think Muhammad never knew how to write. That God never taught him how to write till he's ended his prophethood. So Quran chapter 4. Now I take you to Quran chapter 4, verse 113. To confirm what God has taught the prophet, right? Quran chapter 4, verse 113. And I'm going to confirm to you what God has taught him, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 4, verse 113. And let's see. Let me share the screen. And then we see what God says. God says, Then he says, من شيء وأنزل الله عليك الكتابة والحكمة وعلمك ما لم تكن تعلم وكان فضل الله عليك عظيما right so God says ولولا فضل الله if not for the favor of God upon you right ورحمته and his mercy لحمت طائفة منهم ah then those uh, a party of them who have intended to what to mislead him they, that's their intention. They wanted to what? Mislead him. Then God says, and you do look at, in order to mislead him. Then God says, Wama you, you do luna illa and fusa. And they do not mislead except themselves. Right? Then he says, Wama ya do runa ka min shay. And they, could, they cannot harm you at all. Huh? They cannot harm you, Muhammad, at all. Huh? And this instance is the same thing God told to the, uh, the believers. I think in chapter 5, verse 105. Let me confirm if I'm right. Chapter 5, verse 105, where God says, Ya yu lazina amanu alaykum anfusakum la yadurrukum mandalla iza ehtadaytum. Right? The one who is astray cannot harm you if you are guided. Right, so that promise wasn't only to the prophet. If you are a believer as well, God says, Oh, you who believe, upon you is your own souls. Huh? So everybody on his own. Worry about your own souls first. Because chapter 17, verse 13 to 14 tells you, Kefa binafsika yawma alayka hasiba. On the day of judgment, your soul is sufficient as a recorder of over you. Right? So everybody on his own. So Quran chapter 5 verse 105 tells you, Ya you are lazina amanu alaykum anfusakum. Upon you are your souls, right? Then he says, La yadurrukum mandalla iza ehtadaitum. 
The one who is astray, those who are astray cannot harm you when you have been guided or you are guided. They can't. Illallahi marjukum jami'an. Then he says, for you nabiukum bima kuntum ta'amalu. Then he will inform you of what you have done, of you have been doing. So he will gather, he'll gather you all together. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So now, I take you back to chapter 4, verse 113. That is Surah to nisa So in that verse, God tells the Prophet, Wa anzalallahu alayka al-kitab. And God has revealed uh, to you the al-kitab. Then he says what? Wal hikmata. And then the what? The al hikma which is the wisdom, which the mushriks will say is the sunnah. It's a lie. al hikma doesn't mean sunnah. Aha. Uh -huh. And has taught you what you did not know. And has taught you what you did not know. So if the prophet never knew how to write, God has taught him. If the prophet never knew how to read, God has now taught him. If he doesn't know how to recite, God has now taught him. You'll be a fool to still say Muhammad never knew how to read and write till he passed on. Yeah. Then God says, Wa kana fadulullahi alayka azima. And the favor of, of God upon you has been what? Great. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. Salam Muktabul is saying, you're welcome. Salam Abdul Samad, Adam. Aha. Uh -huh. So you be a fool to say Muhammad till he pass on, never knew how to what? Read and write and recite. So now we've seen the evidences that God has taught him what he did not know. So he has revealed the book and the hikmah and has taught him what he did not know. Just like God says, Allah al insana ma alam yalam. He taught the human being what he knew not. So as a human being, if you knew nothing, he will now teach you. Remember, you came out of the bellies of your mothers knowing nothing. So now you have to study. And when you get God ended up choosing a servant of his and taught him something. Right? Good. So now let's move on. So now I take you to Quran chapter 20 verse 114. After God teaching the prophet, let's see what he told him now. Chapter 20 verse 114 right after he has now taught him let's see what he's going to say concerning after teaching Muhammad alayhi salam so the answer can be found in chapter 20 verse 114 right so he says fata'ala allahu malikul haqq then he says wala ta'ajal bil qur'ani min qabli an yuqda ilayka wahyuhu then he says wa qur rabbi zidni ilma so God says, exalted. So exalted is God, Malik al Haq, the king, the truth. Malik is the king, right? And the Haq is the truth. Then he says, Wala ta'ajal bil Quran, and do not hasten with the Quran. Then he says, Min kabli an yukda ilayka wahyuhu. So do not hasten with the Quran before its what? Inspiration. Is completed to you or decided for you or finished for you or settled for you right aha uh -huh. so we can see at the end of the verse here then God asked him to say what could be so it's a command and say my Lord increase me in knowledge so we can see here it is God who taught Muhammad the Quran remember our Rahman Allama al Quran Khalakal insan Allama hul bayan he taught him the Quran and he will teach you the Al Bayan. Right? Just like I'm doing now. If he hasn't taught me, I can't do that. Good. So now we've seen the evidence clearly. After teaching Muhammad the Quran, now he's telling him not to hasten with the Quran before its inspiration is completed to him. Right? Because the Quran itself is based on inspiration, based on Quran chapter 6 verse 19 where muhammad himself says wa man balak. quran chapter 6 verse 19 and that this quran has been inspired to me in order to warn you by it and whomever it may reach meaning those coming in the future as well and then we have the quran today right so we've seen all the evidences up to verse 20 uh, chapter 20 telling us that god taught he is the one who teaches the quran and he teaches the human being what he knew not so that is Allah, God. Now, the interesting factor is, I'm going to take you to chapter 16, verse 103. After God teaching him everything now, listen what, see what the disbelievers will say. People who are in denial of the message, 
check what they, they are going to tell him. Huh? Let's see what is going to say. Uh, Faris uh, Milla, I see you. Salam. Uh -huh. So chapter 16, verse 103. Uh, let's see the verse here. Chapter 16, verse 103. Uh, let me increase the size a bit. Yeah, chapter 16, verse 103. And let me see if I can share the screen so that people can see the verse as I see it, right? Uh -huh. Let me share the screen and put the verse here. So chapter 16, verse 103. He says, Walakad Nalamu Annahum Yakuluna in Nama Yu Alimuhul Basha. Lisanu Lazi Yulhiduna Ilehi Ajamiun, Wahaza Lisanun Arabiun Mubi. You see, so that is chapter 16, verse 103, right? So he says, And we certainly know that they say it is only a human who teaches him. The language by which they equivocate is foreign. But this is a clear Arabic language. So the Quran, what, is endowed with a clear Arabic language. Not, not unclear, but rather clear. You see, clear. What the Arabians are speaking or writing is not clear. Right? The Quran itself is a clear Arabic language. So there's a comparative word. There's a difference here. If I tell you something is clear, which means something else is not clear. So Quran is a clear Arabic language, right? So God says, and we certainly know that they say it is only a human who teaches him. So they thought Muhammad was taught by a human being after all, because they knew that he was unlearned, right? So now all of the sudden he knows something. So they'll be surprised. So they, they are like, we know, we send, uh, we, they are like, well, it's a human being teaching him. So God says the language by which they equivocate, his people equivocate, is what? Ajamiyu. It's a foreign language. But this is a clear Arabic language. You see the difference? Aha. Uh -huh. So again, now we have seen chapter 16, verse 103. The people are claiming after God taking us through all the verses to show us that he taught Muhammad the book, right? Now people are making accusations and saying that no, God didn't teach him. It is a human being who teaches him. Really? Is that so? Right? Then after that, I'm going to show you another evidence in chapter 25, verse 5 to verse 6, to show you that even the disbeliever, this, this same believer saying that human being is teaching him, they actually know that Muhammad wrote the Quran himself. He wrote the verses of the book. So I'm going to show you the next evidence, which is in chapter 25, verse 5 to verse 6. Right? Chapter 25, verse 5 to verse 6. So this is why when you go to learn something, the best option is to write it down so that you can make a reference point for it. That is how knowledge is, is given, right? And it makes it easier to make a reference point. So Quran chapter 25, verse 5 to verse 6, and I'm going to show you the evidence, right? So that is a verse on the screen. <clears throat> so it says, in verse 5, it says, وَقَالُوا أَسَاتِرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ اَكْتَتَبَهَا you see, let me make it wider. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So verse 5, they said, وَقَالُوا أَسَاتِرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ اَكْتَتَبَهَا فَهِيَ تُمْلَا عَلَيْهِ بُكْرَةً وَأَسِيلًا Then verse 6, قُلْ أَنزَلَهُ الَّذِي يَعْلَمُ السِّرًّا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ and there the disbelievers say tales of the predecessors which he has what transcribed ektatabaha meaning he wrote it down he transcribed it he wrote it down or he has written it when the reason why the verse uses ha as a feminine pronoun the mirror is because of the verses the verses are always have the feminine attribute ayat or ayat ayah it has a feminine attribute. But when it comes to the book or the Quran itself, it has a masculine attribute because it possesses something, right? So the Quran, we need we use uh, hua to address to the Quran. Just like in chapter 97, it says, Right? Indeed, it as a masculine pronoun, right? 
So here in this verse, chapter 25, verse 5, the disbelievers say, they say tales of the what? Past. That is the predecessors. And most of what the Quran says can be confirmed from the past previous scriptures. Right? So tales of the past, yes, <clears throat> the accusations they are making is right. But what they fail to realize is they thought it is a human being teaching Muhammad, whereby Muhammad rather received it as a revelation. So we are going to see the answer here. So tales of the predecessors which he has transcribed. And they, that is the verses, here, that is why God used the word here, because the here, the pronoun, it denotes a female attribute. That is a female pronoun, right? Here. If it is a masculine pronoun, it is say who are. So God, the, the verses, for here, that is the verses he wrote down, for here, tumula alayhi, bukratan wa asila. Uh, they were dictated to him, alayhi, early in the morning, bukratan wa asila, that is before sunset. And that is exactly the time of Fajr and Isha Salat. Right? Fajr Salat is early in the morning. And then Isha Salat is before sunset. It starts at Guru Bishams. Right? Uh, Salam alaikum. Uh, Sister Man uh, Manaz Khan. Hey, Tujis. I see you, bro. Salam. Uh, Adam. Yes, Salam. Ah, so Quran chapter 25 verse 5 is now telling us what the disbelievers at his time said. So Quran chapter 25 verse 6 is going to give us the answer. So the answer says what? Kul anzalahu allazi ya'lamu sirra fi samawati wal ard innahu kana ghafuran rahima. Say, now the messenger has been asked to give the answer. It has been revealed by the one who knows the secrets in the heavens and the earth. Indeed, he is forgiving and merciful. We can clearly see God never refuted the argument by saying no, it's a lie. Muhammad never wrote it. God never said that. He never denied. <clears throat> Just like somebody who see me on the street and you say, hey, Baba Shwaib, you married, you are married with two, three wives. Or you say you married two wives. Right? If I don't deny that allegation, if I don't deny it, and I respond, and I say, yes, I did, that means it's right. But if it is wrong, what the person is saying, I have to deny it straightforward before even answering him. Yes. So God never denied that Muhammad wrote the verses. God never refuted the argument. He never denied. However, what the people didn't realize is it wasn't a human being teaching Muhammad. It was rather what? God who taught him through Gabriel. Uh, through Gabriel. That is the Holy Spirit, right? Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 25 verse 6 says, Say, it has been revealed by the one who knows the secrets in the heavens and the earth. Because the Quran came from God, according to Quran chapter 10 verse 37, right? Uh -huh. Then he says, and the earth, indeed, he is forgiving and merciful. So we can clearly see as evidential in the Quran that Muhammad himself wrote the verses of the Quran. God never refuted that argument. God never said it's a lie that Muhammad never wrote it. No. Uh -huh. For anybody who will go and quote for you chapter 29 verse 48 and say, oh, this is where God says this, that he never recited. It's talking about the book before. He never recited any book before it. Neither did he wrote any book. Did he write any book before the Quran? Meaning he, that means he didn't copy from anywhere. You get the point. Uh -huh. So let's continue. So now we have seen the evidences pertaining to how people are thinking that Muhammad has been taught by somebody. Meanwhile, he was taught by God instead of a human being, right? That is the difference. Then the, his people went ahead to even accuse him of being a poor, a poet, meaning he has been taught poetry. And that is not the case. So I'm going to show you the other, other evidence, which is based in chapter 39, verse 6, uh, chapter 36, verse 69 to verse 70. Chapter 36, verse 69 to verse 70. And let's see the evidence concerning the accusations his people made. Yeah, we go to Surah to Yasin, right? Surah to Yasin. Uh, let me see. I've not been reading the comments. Let me see as well what is going on. Yeah, Mufasir Hamad. Salam, I see you, bro. Uh huh. So, okay, I see people are focused on the lecture. So let, let me get it going. Okay. Mm hmm. So I will share the screen now so that we get to see the verse I was talking about, right? 
and let's examine the verse. So chapter 36, verse 30, uh, verse 69 to verse 70. And I share the screen and let's see what the verse says, right? Mm -hmm. So I go to here. So Surah to Yasin, right? Verse 69 to verse 70. Where is this? Hmm? Wama allamnahu. Then he says shihira. Allamnahu shihira. Wama yambagi lahu. In huwa illa zikirun wa Quranun mubi. You see? Aha. Uh -huh. So then it goes. It says, and we did not teach him poetry. Nor was it necessary for him. It is only a remembrance and a clear reading. You see. So God is now telling people that God did not teach Muhammad poetry. Because remember, the disbelievers at his time were considering him to be a poet. Right? Uh -huh. A poet, you know, usually a poet writes his poems down, memorizes it, and then goes to spew it out. Right, to the people right so people considered muhammad to be a poet which he was not so god is refuting that argument that he is not a poet so he is telling them we did not teach him poetry and some people will ask why is god using the word we 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 now this is the instance of the holy spirit that is the ruhul kudus quran chapter 16 verse 102 is using this formality right the we because he's been sent as a mediator between god and the messenger that is muhammad so he uses the word we it's a message given to another messenger to bring to another messenger right aha uh -huh. so he uses we so it's not god directly saying we right and we did not teach him poetry nor was it necessarily for him that is muhammad it is only a remembrance and a clear reading then it continues to verse 70 that he may warn whom whoever is alive at the time he was sent, it's supposed to be warned whoever is alive and to enforce the word against the disbelievers. So that the, the truth, the word of truth will be enforced against disbelievers. Then they will see it and hear it with their own ears and eyes. And then they will see that, okay, this is the truth being spoken to them. Because sometimes people realize the truth, but they are in denial. People can know something is the truth, but they deny it, which is a fact, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So let's move on. So now we've seen the evidence is concerning why people are accusing Muhammad of being taught by another human being instead of being taught by God, right? So now that now that he has qualified and he's learned and he has knowledge, remember God has taught him something. So now he has to be able to teach other people as well. That's how knowledge works. God teaches you something, you have to also go and teach other people that. You don't stick with it in your house. So that's how knowledge works, right? So I'm going to break it down. So when you go to Quran chapter chapter 2, verse 129, this is what Abraham, the supplication he made. Abraham made a supplication to God concerning God sending a messenger to guide people, right? Uh, to Sorry, to teach people. So that is in Quran chapter 2, verse 129. Quran chapter 2, verse 129. And I'm coming to that. I'll be explaining some interesting uh, points where people have misunderstood, right? So in this verse, Quran chapter 2, verse 129, it says, So it says, mm? Then he says, Then he says, Azizul Hakim. He says, Our Lord. Yeah, he was taught by the Ruhul Kudus. Uh, Ras Asu is asking a question. He says, Was Muhammad taught? Let me put it here. He says, Was Muhammad taught? Was, he says, so was Muhammad taught by Jibril or unseen? The answer can be found in Quran chapter 2, verse 97, right? Quran 
chapter 2, verse 97. Uh, Vora Vora, that's your opinion. <laughs> have you been a god before? <laughs> Vora Vora, have you been a god before? How do you know God does not teach? You see? Huh? Vora Vora says, Oh, okay, no problem. Let me continue so that I don't die, deviate from the topic. Anyways. So Quran chapter 2, verse 129, Abraham made a supplication. He says, our Lord, and raise, and raise among them a messenger from them, reciting to them your verses, that is your verses, and then what? And teaching them the book and the what? Wisdom, and then what? To what? Vindicate them. That is in the act of pu purifying in the art of vindicating, right? To vindicate them. Then he says, Innaka anta azizul hakim. Indeed, you are the Almighty, the wise. Hmm? Uh -huh. You are the Almighty, the wise. Now, <clears throat> let's continue. So now, Abraham made a supplication, and later on now, God has answered his supplication. So God is not going to... Uh... <laughs> Vora Vora says, Baba Shrive, you are God. I'm sorry, please don't take me there. I'm not a God, please. I'm not God and I'm not God. There's only one God, right? I'm not God. Uh, Ras Asu says, the Bible is corrupt. So forget, so forget the Bible. Okay. Ras Asu. Are you also a correctional officer? <laughs> uh, oh, no, no, no. I don't need to block Vora Vora. No. Let, let him be there. He didn't insult anybody. He just said something. Well, that's his opinion. I'm denying it. What he said, I said, no, I'm not. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So that that is that is a a big comment for people. So I, I I don't. Okay, let's continue. I'm getting distracted. Yes, Salam Kamal Adams. Okay. Then Abraham made a supplication in Quran chapter two verse one hundred and twenty nine, and God answered. Right. Uh huh. Uh yeah. Shahid uh, said Usman Salam. Peace be upon you. Uh -huh. So God answered Abraham's supplication. So now we are going to see how God answered his supplication. So Quran chapter 62, verse 2. And I'm going to share the screen so that we see what the verse says concerning Abraham's supplication to God and how he asked God to raise a messenger among the people, right? Uh -huh. Quran chapter 62, verse 2. That, that is Surah al Surah al -Jumaa. So God says, Who are Lazi? Who are Lazi? fil Ummiyina, Rasulan Minhum, Yatlu, Alehim, Ayatihi, Wa Yuzakihim, Wa Yuallimuhum, Al Kitaba, Wal Hikma, Wa In Kanum in Kabul Lafi, the Lalin Mubi. He is the one who has raised among the on land, Ummiyina, on land. Now, when we say on land, they are people who never learned any scripture from God. They have never read any book from God. They have never received any book from God. They have no idea what the book of God says. Right? If you want to know that evidence, you can go to Quran chapter 6, verse 155 to 157. The answer is there. Right? They were unaware of what the book of God says. That's why they are called Umiyina. And then the ignorant mushriks will classify Umiyina as somebody who doesn't know how to read and write. If that is the case, I'm going to show you the contradiction according to the Mushriks. I'm going to prove it right here. So, who are Lazi Basafil Umiyina Rasulan Minhum Yatlu Alehim Ayatihi? So, he is the one who has raised among the online a messenger among from themselves, from them, reciting to them his verses, the verses of God. Wayuzakihim, Wayuzakihim, that is purifying them in the act of vindicating. And to teach them, and teaching them what? The book and the what? The wisdom. While they were before it, uh, before 
they were in clear error, right? So before the, the messenger was sent to them to teach them, they were in clear error. They have no idea what the book of God says because they never received any book from God, right? So now God did that favor based on the supplication Ibrahim alayhi salam did in Quran chapter 2 verse 129. So God answered by sending a messenger. So this messenger who has now been taught by God himself, Quran chapter 4 verse 113, he is now coming to teach the unlearned ones. Remember, he was not sent to teach learned people. Teach people who already knew the scripture. He was only sent to teach those people. Not to teach the children of Israel. <laughs> yes. He is not coming to teach the children of Israel. You'll be a fool to think Muhammad was coming to teach children of Israel. When they already know the scripture. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. And by the way, I have, a, I have a lecture called the children of Israel. Whoever wants to know. It's about black people. We already had scriptures. We knew God before even Arab came to us, right? Before Arabs came to Africa, before the whites came to Africa, we already knew who God is. But the problem is we abandoned the scriptures of God. So the white and the Arabs formulated something else to deceive us, right? So somebody will say, oh, you, you are an African. Then why are you upholding the Quran? I'm holding the Quran because it's the book of God. It's not the book of the Arabs. Neither is, the, is it the book of Muhammad. So get it, get it right in your head. Aha. Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 62 verse 2. Who fil ummiyina rasulan minhum yatlu alayhim ayati wa yuzakihim wa yuallimuhum al-kitaba wal -kima. So he is only there among the ummiyina to teach them the book and the wisdom, not to teach me. Muhammad was not sent to teach me, a learned person. Neither was he sent to teach the uh, the Bani Israila. No. No. Yes, he has also been sent to warn. He can warn the children of Israel, but he's not there to teach the children of Israel. There is a difference. Yeah, that is Quran chapter 62, verse 2, right? So if you are claiming this Umiyina, his people that he went to teach, you claim these people can write the Quran. They wrote the Quran. They wrote it. They can read and write. But the prophet and the messenger, who was raised among them to teach them? You, the foolish mushriks, are claiming that he cannot read and write. Are you, are you okay? How can your teacher who is teaching you the book and the wisdom cannot read when you write something according to the hadith? When you write something, he doesn't know what you have written. He cannot know where, where it is. And he doesn't know how to write. That is according to the mushriks. <laughs> because the Quran calls him Ummi, Nabi Ummi. When we say umiya, they don't know because it's unlearned, unlearned, meaning he never learned any book from God in the past. The answer is in Quran chapter 42, verse 52. You did not know what was the book nor the faith. Right? That is in the past. Then now God taught him the book and the wisdom. So now he has been sent to teach his people who are also unlearned concerning any scriptures from God. So he has to now recite the verses of God to them and teach them the book and the hikmah. Not to teach me. There's no one single verse where God says Muhammad was sent to teach the world the book. No. No. Aha. Uh -huh. So to bear witness to that, Quran chapter 26 verse 197, to tell you this, that the scholars among we, the children of Israel, which, which are the Africans, the children of Israel, Study your roots. You are the children of Israel. We, the children of Israel, we already know the book. So God says in Quran chapter 26, verse 197. Has it not been a sign for them who? The Arabs? Has it not been a miracle or a sign for them that, that the scholars... Uh, the learned ones among the children of Israel already know they know the they know the Quran, they know the book. We know the book of God because we have been given scriptures in the past. But what we we'll allow corruption to indulge inside. So where are the, where is the original? We hid it somewhere. People took it off. You know, and then the, these books are rewritten and then they give it the name Holy Bible, New Testament, Old Testament. So we lost everything. Right, so this is why God has to bring a book whereby He revealed the secret again to you, according to Quran chapter 27, verse 76. Listen carefully what God says concerning the children of Israel. 
inna haza alqur'ana yaqussu ala bani israila akthar allazi hum fihi yaqtalifun indeed this quran narrates to the children of israel most of what they are disputing about most god didn't say few this quran it narrates most of what the children of israel are disputing about and when we say israel we are not talking about the israel in the middle east next to palestine that was formed in 1948 in the year 1948 as an israeli state it is not the israel god is talking about israel is a kabila is a tribe as bath huh right aha uh -huh. so this 12th tribe is divided into 12 tribes you can find the answer in chapter two, uh, chapter 7 verse 159 go and read down once you get the answer there concerning the children of israel how they were divided into 12 tribes and then it's became a uh, different kingdoms and then africans and then we are divided right aha uh -huh. <clears throat> so let's continue uh musa mus uh, let me see what this guy says uh Aha, uh -huh. Musa Shaibu says, I want to know whether it is established that we we fast. Okay, he forgot to put fast. We fast 30 or 29 days in Ramadan. Uh, Ramadan is not a fixed number, right? It has to do with the spotting of the crescent, the waxing crescent, till you spot the waning crescent. So you count those days in between. The waxing crescent from the time you spot the shahar till the time you spot the ending shahar. That's how it is being counted. So some people can get the chance to do 25, some will get 26, some get 27, some get 28. It's not a fixed number, but you are doing it within a month, right? So Quran chapter 2, verse 185, he says, min hmm? uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Aha. Musa Arabogo says, Salam, Bab. Some of us in Ghana agree with you, so keep on doing the work. I appreciate that. Keep up with the truth. Follow the truth. That is all what matters, right? Thank you for the support. Aha, uh -huh, let's go, let's move on. Aha, uh -huh, so, yes. Mm -hmm. So, Muhammad as a messenger was only sent to the, what? Umiyina to teach them the book. Not me, not me, Baba Shai, no. He was supposed to teach the Umiyina, his people who never knew the book. He has to teach them the book and the what? Wisdom. Not me. Listen carefully. Neither is he coming to teach a learned person. There's no one single verse where he says Muhammad has to go and teach a learned person <laughs> or a knowledgeable person. No. Who no, already knows the scripture? No. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm going to break this instance to let people understand this. I know the mushriks and the foolish ones out there, the dumb ones, will misquote me and misunderstand what I mean. And they will say, look, he's disrespecting our prophet. You have taken the prophet as an idol. So your head is cracking like people on drugs i don't understand you <clears throat> yeah thank you very much uh yeah sharif karim salam anyways let me continue so quran chapter 44 verse 13 to verse 14 even his people bore witness that he was a learner muhammad was a learned person so quran chapter 44 verse 13 to verse 14 let's see what it says then i can share the screen and then we see what the verse says, right? How his people tag him as, as a mad, crazy teacher, right? Because they know he's learned. But they, they, they refuse to, uh, okay, or they fail to bring the evidence that it was a human being teaching Muhammad, right? So they were confused. Quran chapter 44, verse 13 to verse 14, it says, Anna lahumul zikra, uh, zikra, wa kad ja'ahum rasulun mubi. ثم تولوا عنه وقالوا اه معلم مجنون how would that remembrance be for them when there has already come to them a clear messenger then they turn away تولوا عنه they turn away from him then he says what وقالوا and they said Mu'allamun majnoon. They say he's a crazy teacher. 
When we say mu'allamun, is somebody who is knowledgeable and can teach. Because God has taught him the book. And now he is teaching the people the book. So his people claim he is a crazy teacher. Mu'allamun majnoon. And God gave the answer to that. Huh? He gave the answer to that in Quran chapter 68, verse 1 to verse uh, 2, right? Quran chapter, oh, sorry. Quran chapter 68, verse 1 to verse 2. Surah Al-Kalam. Surah Al-Kalam. He says, Noon wal-kalami wa ma yasturun. Because now, as a teacher, he has to teach people also to write the book, right? Because he's a teacher. He knows how to read. He knows how to write. So now he's teaching his people how to read and write as well. Noon wal-kalami wa ma yasturun. Then he says, Ma anta binimati rabbika bimajnoon. And by the favor of your Lord, you are not a madman. You are not crazy. That is what God told Muhammad. Because his people were classifying him as a madman. A crazy teacher because he's teaching people now when you are limited he's teaching people the book and the wisdom right so his people were tagging him as a mad teacher a crazy teacher so god is saying by the favor of your lord you are not a madman you are not a crazy man right aha uh -huh. so this is what happened to learned people when you become a learned pe person people start classifying when they don't understand what you're saying they classify you as a crazy man madman and so on because they don't understand what you're saying, right? So to give you evidences that Muhammad was not uh, supposed to teach learned people. Learned people can know things themselves by themselves. You don't need to teach them, right? One of the evidences to Quran chapter twenty-two verse fifty-four, right? Quran chapter twenty-two verse fifty-four. Quran chapter twenty-two verse fifty-four, where God says, "Waliya alam al utu li ilma." Then he says, And that those who have been given the knowledge will know that it is the truth from your law, and they will believe in it, and then their hearts will humble to it. And indeed, God is the guide of those who believe to a straight path. You see, so then it goes again. Quran chapter 34, verse 6. Those who already have knowledge, you don't need somebody to teach them. They can comprehend what the book is saying. Quran chapter 6, verse 105. This is what God told Muhammad. And I'm going to share the screen and you see what it says. Quran chapter 6, verse 105. To tell you that learned people need a teacher. Right? Learned people, people who have knowledge, they don't need the teacher to teach them that. The book. Quran chapter 6, verse 105, and I share the screen, and then we see what the verse says, right? Quran chapter 6, verse 105. It says, wali yakulu darasta, wali li alamun. And likewise, or thus, have we conducted the verses, and so that they may say, uh, and so they may say, and that they may say, you, Muhammad, have studied. Right? You have studied. Then he says, And that we may clarify it. So that the who here denotes a masculine pronoun, which is represent the book or the Quran. Right? So God will now clarify the book for people who know. That is knowledgeable people. So a knowledgeable person who is following the verses of God can see directly what God has explained. Right? Aha, uh -huh. you don't need any garbage at least to explain the Quran for you when God is the one explaining. You'll be a fool, the dumbest fool on earth to think Hadith explains the Quran. I repeat, the dumbest fool ever to think the Hadith is explaining the Quran instead of the Quran explaining itself. Aha, uh -huh. then again, Quran chapter 41, verse 3, it says, Kitabun Fusilat Ayatu Quranan Arabian Likaumi Alamun. A book whose verses have been explained, that is detailed, right? Elaborated as an Arabic reading for people who know, right? Then again, Quran chapter 38, verse 29. Uh, it is a blessed book which we have revealed to you so that they may contemplate its verses and that those of intelligence will take heed. And similarly, Quran chapter 39, verse 18, is not only about reading 
or trying to understand something directly. It's about also listening. So God says, Allazina yastami'una lakawla, fa yattabi'una ahsanahu. Then he says, Ulaika allazina adahumullah wa ulaika umul ulil albab. Those who listen to the word and follow the best of it, they are those. Those are the ones whom God has guided, and they are those who possess what? Intelligence. Aha. Uh -huh. So you need that intelligence, that the level of IQ to comprehend when you are being told something, right? Good. Uh, Somebody is asking a question. Let me see. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mufassir. He says, what? He says, brother, how many times do you pray a day and how many rakas do you do in each? Uh, first of all, your question is coming from a wrong angle. You're asking me a question as if there is something called rakaat in the Quran. You are asking me a question as if the religion is only based about prayer. You understand? Uh, so your question, of course, I have an answer to your question, but uh, it's irrelevant question. It's like you're asking me a personal question. That's irrelevant. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's move on. So before I open the phone lines, let me give you some instances. Quran chapter 3 verse 48. Isa alayhi salam, Jesus was taught by God. And God says, and he, God, will teach him the book, the wisdom, the Torah, and the gospel. Right? So you can see God is the one teaching the prophets. He taught them. Right? Quran chapter 18 verse 65 to verse 66. Moses went to a servant of God whom God has chosen. This is what the verse says. It says, then they found a servant from our servant whom we had given mercy from us and had taught him knowledge from us. Right? God taught him knowledge. So now Moses has to go to this servant. So Moses said to him, can I follow you in order to teach me some of what you have been taught? Of right guidance so you can see if god has taught me baba shrine something i can also teach other people it is not illegal if god has taught you something you can also teach that's what that's like how i showed you that muhammad was taught by god and he went and taught the umiyina also the book and the wisdom just like god taught him in chapter 4 verse 113 and here chapter 16 chapter 18 verse 65 to 66 we can see that a servant of god who was taught by god who was given knowledge, Moses went to this servant to also learn from him. He says, can I follow you in order to teach me some of what you have been taught of right guidance? You see it. Then again, chapter 12, verse 21, concerning Joseph, right? This is what God says concerning Joseph. He says, the one who has purchased him from Egypt said to his woman, confer his abode, perhaps he will benefit us, or we can adopt him as a son. Thus, we firmly establish Joseph on earth, and so that we may teach him the interpretation of discourses. You see, we may teach him the interpretation of what? Discourses. It's God who will teach you all that, right? Then he says, God was dominant over his affair, but most of the people do, did not know. Quran chapter 12, verse 101. Jo Joseph himself said, Lord, you have given me of the, of the dominion. And taught me of the interpretation of discourses. You see, he had acknowledged that God taught him something. Creator of the heavens and the earth, you are my guardian in the world and the hereafter. Let me die as a submitter and enroll me with the righteous. This is a supplication of Joseph. Quran chapter 12 verse 37. He, Joseph, said, no food which is provided will come to you. That is the prisoners who were with him in the prison. No food will come to them both. But I can inform you of its interpretation before that comes to you both. That is of what my Lord has taught me. Indeed, I have left the creed of people who do not believe in God. And they are disbelievers in the hereafter. Now, all these verses I'm quoting is in line concerning how God teaches people. He can teach us something which we can also teach other people. Right? Uh -huh. So, when we say God is the source of knowledge, and this is confirmed in Quran chapter 2, verse 255, right? Quran chapter 2, verse 255, which the sectarians will say, Ayatul Kursi, right? And let's see what it says.
Yeah, I will come to your question. Let me put the question on the screen. Uh, Abdul Basit Kawawa is asking a question. Before I come to that, let me explain this. What? So, if you go to Surah Al uh, Surah Al Baqarah, chapter two, verse two hundred and fifty-five, right? There is a uh, one interesting side of the verse where God says in that verse, in that verse, He says, "Wala yuhi tu nabishay in min ilmihi illa bimasha." This part of the verse is very, very interesting. Where I'm using the mouse to move, he says, "Wala you he tu na bishay in min ilimihi illa bimasha." He says, "None will encompass ah uh, ah uh, from his knowledge that is anything. None will encompass a thing or anything from his knowledge except for what he wills. That is what God wills, because He is the source of knowledge, all knowledge. He teaches the people what they knew not." The first person to make an aeroplane was taught by God. The first person to make a ship was taught by God. He is inspired and taught by God. Now, when we say God teaches, it doesn't mean God will take a blackboard or a board to write with a chalk or to come down to teach you by, you know, uh, paying school fees. And that's not how the teaching works. It, it works through inspiration. That's how God teaches people, right? Uh -huh. So here, Quran chapter 2, verse 255, he says, none will encompass anything from his knowledge except for what he wills. So only what God wills, you can get the knowledge. If he doesn't will, you are not going to get the knowledge thereof. Right? Now, somebody is asking a question. He said, please, Baba, why is that always when Allah speaks, Allah uses the word we in, in, instead of I? I need to comprehend this. If you go to Quran chapter uh, chapter 20, verse verse. Uh, uh, 14. I'm going to show you an example. Quran chapter 20, verse 14. When God was having uh, a, conv a, a speaking with to, to Moses, to Musa, he used the word I. He used the instance I. Now that is God because that is God speaking. Islam, Larry Muntala, you're welcome. Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 20, verse 14. It says, Innani anallah la ila illa ana fa'buduni wa akimi salat li zikiri. It says, Indeed, I am the God. There is no God except me. Right? Then it says, So worship me and establish the salat for my remembrance. So you can see here, he was talking to Moses. He didn't say we. He says, I. Because that is him direct talking to Moses, not anybody else. But the Quran was revealed by God through what? The Ruhul Qudus to bring to Muhammad. So God says in Quran chapter 81 verse 19, Inna hu la kawla rasul al -kareem. Chapter 81 verse 19, because God gave it as a message to the Ruhul Qudus, that is Gabriel, in order to bring it to Muhammad. So the mediator is now talking from inspiration to another messenger. So when the message is coming from him, if he has to say something, he has to use we. The message doesn't belong to him. And I give you a simple example. Kawawa. I work in the market, right? My boss has opened a market and I work in the market. Now, when you come to the shop and I'm working in the shop and you ask us, if you ask me, uh, you say, oh, Baba Shwai, uh, do you guys have uh, tomatoes in your shop? I can say, yes, we have. If I use the word we have, because I'm in the mediator between you and my boss, because I'm representing the shop. So me representing the shop, I can say, yes, we here we sell. I can start telling you we sell rice, we sell apple, or we can even deliver at your home. <laughs> but when I'm using the we, doesn't necessarily mean I'm the one going to be doing all that. Or does it mean I'm the owner of the business? No, there's the owner himself. But he put me there as a mediator. So this mediator we are talking about, Quran chapter 2, verse 97, Quran chapter 2, verse 97, clearly tells you that Gabriel, Jibril brought the Quran down to Muhammad. He says in this verse, Kul, man kena aduwan lil Jibrila, fa innahu nazzalahu ala kalbika bi iznillah. He is the one who brought it into your heart by the permission of God. Salam, Isawasi. I see you. 
Ah uh, salam Ab Abdul Fatah. Yeah, CC. Aha, uh -huh. so Kawawa, if you are following the we use in the Quran is the angel using angels using that. And the answer can be broken down in chapter 37, verse 165 to 169. If you want to understand, brother, how the angels play, play a role in the sense of using we in the Quran. It is not God directly using the word we. You understand? It is not God directly using the word we. Uh -huh. It is the mediator he has given the message and he has already inspired to him how the message should be delivered. So somebody might say, Oh, how come if God is talking or the angel is talking, why does he hear? Why does he say we or look? When you check Quran chapter 112, Muhammad was inspired by saying, Kul, who Allah ahad, say he is one God, he God is one. It wasn't God directly talking to Muhammad. If it was God directly, he would say, Kul, say, I, I, the God, am one. Just like he was speaking to Moses, alayhi salam, Quran chapter 20, verse 14 to 15. When he was speaking to Musa, you can see the directness of his speech. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So let's let's continue before I open the phone lines. Let me put the phone lines here. Then people can call. Uh, I'm putting up the phone lines. If you have a question based on what I've said, you can call. Yeah, the angels are not God. Abdul Karim Rafiu says, but the angels are not God. Yes, they are not God. There is only one God. Yes. The angels are not God. Yes, they are not. Okay. So the phone lines, the phone line is open. You can call via WhatsApp only. You have two questions at a time and no long talk because my time is up. I have to go back to the kids and to the <clears throat> yeah thank you abdul basit kawawa i appreciate it thank you for your appreciation uh-huh so uh let me see if i have something else to add before this let me see let me see let me see let me see uh-huh Yes, and based on Quran chapter 5, verse 4, uh, it says, they ask you what is lawful for them, right, for the people. Say, lawful for you are, are good things, and what you have you have taught of the predatory uh, dogs, what you have been taught of. And then it says, you teach them from what God has taught you. You teach the, the dogs from what God has taught you, meaning you teach them to go and catch something from you, for you based on what God has taught you. So when we say God has taught you, it's based on what God has inspired you to be done. You see, aha, uh -huh. that is based on that. Yeah, salam alaikum. Ah, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. This is Yunus Hassan. You are welcome, Yunus Hassan. You have two questions to ask. Um, yeah, basically. See, somebody asked a question regarding the pre. Are you with us? Your network is bad. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Musa Shaibu. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yes, the the caller's network was bad, so let me see the time. Uh, it's, my time is up. I need to go for. It's getting dark. I have to go for salat. Uh, Yes, hello. Yes, yeah, so what I was saying, mm -hmm. when somebody asks a question, somebody asks you a question regarding the how you pray or uh, how many times you pray and how many rakas. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the questions are for clarity. They just want to understand. And when some people, some people like us are following, we want to understand 
why you are doing what you are doing because it's not yeah ladies and gentlemen you can bring your questions in or you can type if you cannot call your scribe uh sharif karim says did the prophet really ascend to the sky or was he dreaming it was a vision it was a based on a vision quran chapter 17 verse 60 right based on a vision quran chapter 17 verse 60. yeah hello yes i said the yeah, question Salam, was asked. Bonia, it was not answered uh brother i said you have two questions to ask me you can ask me a question okay so um please i would like to know regarding the five daily prayers as you've been making comments do you pray the five daily prayers or you decide to pray just three prayers we just want to understand some of us have been following and want to understand you from what you have been seeing want to understand your perspective it's not that we are attacking or accusing or anything we just want to understand your perspective okay so that's you know, your, that's uh, Islam, yes. that is that is your first question right yes. your first question yes. is i don't do five salats it's not in the quran i only do three salats which is okay. found in the quran and okay, that is which are, which are, which that are, which are, is which ones that is salat al-fajr salat al-wusta and salat al-isha that those are the only three salats mentioned in the quran okay could you explain the salat to start to me from your understanding quran chapter 2 verse 238 you find it there salat will start okay no problem and this is just a uh, question and answer session that is fine another thing i'm mm -hmm. i'm a little bit worried with that so why you call some people mushrik mm -hmm. all of a sudden is that part of quran quran it, has given the go ahead to call them mushrik yes it has given the is that your second question yes okay so thank you for that question let me give you an answer. When you go to Quran chapter 41 verse 6, Quran chapter okay. 41 verse 6, and listen carefully. Quran chapter okay. 40 says, uh, 41 verse 6 says, Kul innama ana basharum mithlukum yuha ilayya annama ilahukum ilahun wahid. Then he says, Fastakimu ilayhi wastagfiru. Then he says, Wailu lil mushirki. Now he's telling the messenger, Wailu lil mushirki, to woe to the mushriks. Now, if he doesn't know the mushriks, how can he woe to the mushriks? Yeah, so now, how do we know that the Ahlul Sunnah, Tijaniya, Chiyad, you, uh, Allah has given you the go-ahead to call them mushrik? Because yes. they first of all believe that they believe that they believe in Allah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So now, if you look at the teachings of uh, Al-Quran and Surah al mm -hmm. okay, chapter 14 of Quran, verse 14 to 15 mm -hmm. allah gives the clarity okay the 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 the, the, the um, desert arabs came to the prophet and said they have submitted Allah said they said they believe first that they have faith allah says no you don't have faith just say you have submitted but faith will only come to you if you only what listen to the prophet and the allah and allah and then uh, sacrifice your property and your belongings and your time or your energy or your effort with uh, to allah and the prophet so of course we, there's a difference between a muslim and a mormon but when you go to the extreme and then call people mushrik that is clearly that is clearly taking them off the field of islam completely yes because mushrik is a hard thing yes uh so brother <laughs> brother still if somebody believes in allah, brother stay, yeah, so stay, man, I want to, I, brother stay stay on the line stay on the line stay on the no line problem. No problem. I'm here. Chapter 12, here. verse 106. God says, no, no, have, you paid, have you paid attention to what I said? The Muzrat 49, 14, and then 15. Brother, that has the nothing. That, oh, wait. That has nothing to do with the topic at hand. Uh, you ask me a question. Well, I, uh, it's a Le question. The only listen, problem. You ask me a question. And you say, Why okay. do I call people mushriks? I quoted a verse to show you that even the messenger was had the audacity to call people mushriks he has the audacity Not people i didn't say people i said people who, who believe in allah they believe in and let allah, me allah, let me so give you the verse uh, so not people, relax not everybody, brother not everybody. No usually problem. after your question i have to drop you because this is why i don't like this kind of thing listen when you ask a question listen for the answers 
I'm not here to listen to you. So my point is. Uh, you see, uh, yes, you will give the answer, but the answer brother, does not mean that I should not have bro- a reply. But brother, if you want a reply, I told you, are you a scholar? You said no. If you cannot face me as a scholar for a dialogue, that's a matter of calling to ask a question. So if you ask a question, wait till I give you the answer. Quran chapter 12, verse 106. God says, He says, listen carefully. He says, listen carefully. He says, listen carefully. He says, most of them do not believe in God except while they are mushriks. Are you listening to me? A person can believe in God, but it's a mushrik. So just because somebody saying they believe in God and I can see they are doing shirka, I have the right to call them mushriks. You give me a one verse where I cannot call somebody mushrik. Simple, then I end the call. First of all, First of all, are you so going now, to give me a verse? What you are saying. First of all, yeah, I have to, I have to give you a verse because they said they have believed, right? And I so said, believe, give me I'll one verse. Wait, Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Okay, Surah Al Baqarah, Chapter Two, Quran, Verse Two Hundred and Two Hundred and Eighty Six. Allah says, and there's some noise at your side. Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. It is not 286. 286. That's the, uh, so that is 285 to 286. I was coming to that point. 285. That, I'm starting from 285. Then I'll get to brother, the 286. Brother, wait. Okay. Wait. So that, okay, then, okay. 285 to 286. Wait. There are two verses together. Wait. Before you read the verse, tell me what, what you are going okay. to tell me. Does it say, does it say, Somebody cannot be called a mushrik. No, 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 I'm telling you their belief. Allah has confirmed some people's belief. You said people, so right now it is from your perspective. Brother. You see, you are doing it from your perspective. Which brother, is fine. I don't I, have a brother, it is your view. Learn to listen well before you answer a question. I said, give me no, one. Listening to me. I don't need to listen. I'm not here to listen to you if your question is not appropriate. You don't get my point. Okay. I only ask you a simple question. Okay. I only ask you a simple question. Do you have one verse where it says I cannot call such people mushriks? Such people like who? That's the thing. Who? That the people who believe in God but they are doing shirk. Says, are you listening? Yes, you see. Yeah, you see. Are you listening? You see, that's not my problem. Yes, I'm listening. I said you the see, people. I, I want to reply. You are not giving the chance. But wait, I said the people who believe in God okay. but they are still doing shirk. Yes. I have the right to call Good. them mushriks. So can you give me one Good, verse? Listen fine. to me. Can you give me okay. one verse where it says I cannot call them mushrooms? See, look, wait, wait a minute. You see, what you are... Next caller, please, before I end. Look at you, Mr. Moore. Lord. Oh. Thank you very much, Larry Mutala. Now, you see, guys, you see what... But the kind of things uh, uh, that that gets on my nerves. <laughs> I'm calling you a mushrik. I have the proof, and I say if you can disprove me, page me for a dialogue. I will I will face you. Look, guys, let me tell you one secret. All the mushriks are scared to come on my platform. Wallahi, they are afraid. I've given, I've stretched my hand. I said they should come for a live dialogue. All of them are right. They say no, we are not going to face you on your platform. Because you have power. What do you mean I have power? If I'm sitting here, you claim I'm lying to people. If you want to disprove me, do you need to go somewhere else to disprove me? Come to my platform and disprove me. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. So I said, just come here and disprove me. You see, now they beat around the bush. They go in circles. A simple question they can't answer. When they ask me a question, I give them the answer simply. But when I ask them a simple question, ah, but, 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 you see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, I can take the last caller before. If there is nobody, then I drop. Uh, Uh, where is Uti Dawa and his chicken sense followers? Please, they are kindly invited to the <laughs> Yeah, let them come. Let hey, what was it? Yes, uh, let me see. 
Mufasir is saying something. A shirk in legislation is when you add laws to the deen. You add faith, uh, hadith books with different laws to the deen. Yeah, that is shirk. Yes. Yes. So Quran chapter 42 verse 21 give us that that uh, command there. Salim. Quran chapter 42 verse 21 uh let me share the screen before i end the program uh i share the screen here quran chapter 42 verse 21. so he says am lahum shuraka ushara ulahu mina din malamu ya zanubi illah am lahum shuraka ushara ulahu mina din malamu ya zanubi illah or do they have what idols that is associate partners who have legislated for them of a deen to which god has not authorized or given permission do they have such associates so the the reason why i call the ali sunnah the the shias all of them mushriks because they associate certain legislations and laws and beliefs in their deen then god which god has not authorized that makes you a mushrik. So Quran chapter 12, verse 106, it says, most of them do not believe in God except while they are mushriks. Right? Uh -huh. So of course, I have the right to call you a mushrik. It's simple. Hmm? Uh -huh. So it's just simple as that. Uh, Abdul Basit Kawawa says, how did the prophet ascend to the heaven? He did that by vision. It's not a physical ascension. It's a vision. Quran chapter 17, verse 60 confirms that as a vision. Right? Uh -huh. It was a vision. And you know, when you have visions, anything can happen. Right? Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I think my my the kids need my attention now. Uh, I need to end now. <laughs> somebody is saying the mushriks where are you he says don't make noise don't make noise when baba is offline come now exactly just come now i give them the chance to call as i know somebody some people might be wondering why i dropped that caller right he's trying to be argumentative i only give chance for two questions i've already answered his questions by the, this is their problem. They try to be argumentative by not answering direct questions. Even in a debate and a dialogue, they are like that. And this scholar, he has called me before. I asked him, is he a scholar? He said, no. He didn't even answer me. I keep asking him, are you a scholar? He doesn't want to answer. Then I said, I need a scholar from your section, from your field, because I waste my time debating with amateurs. It's a waste of time. Because the questions I have, an amateur cannot answer. You see the point. So I asked him, are you a scholar? He didn't want to answer. You see? So now you call. I said, you have a chance for two questions. You asked the first question, I answered you. You asked the second question, I gave you the answer. Now I ask you one question. And I said, bring me one verse where it says I cannot call somebody a mushrik whilst I can see that they are doing shirk. And that's it. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and patience. I appreciate your support. Uh, I've done one hour, 45 minutes, and this is where I have to end the topic. And I have some interesting video as a surprise for you, which I played in the beginning. And I think I have to play again. Uh, I think the guy is a full of mess. Mm -hmm. I think uh, his his name should be Ghana Bodanfo. I think Ghana Mushirk Bodanfo. Mm -hmm. That guy, that guy is, is totally confused. And I'm going to play the video before I end. So subhana rabbi izzati amma yasifun wa salamu ala al mursalin that is why the bible says let us make man in our own image which image it is the image of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam that even before jesus became a creation it was because of nur al muhammadiyah that is why christ became a creation other than that god wouldn't have created jesus even before jesus became a creation it was because of Nur al Muhammadiyah that is why Christ became a creation. Other than that, God wouldn't have created Jesus. Day, inshallah. 
it is important to know that when Allah wanted to begin his creations, when there was nothing in nothing, then he has not created the heavens, the earth, everything in everything. That is Hayatul uh, Yahutu. That is when Allah Azawajalla removed his light. When he removed his light, and then he used the light to create Muhammad. That is why he's called the Nurul, Nurullah in Quran 5 verse 15. He's mentioned as Nurullah. Then this light is divided into four. Now, when the light was divided into four, then they use one to create um, the tablet and the pen, and then the, the column. Then Allah commanded the column to create, uh, to write everything that will happen on the face of this planet. Now, after that, they use the other light to create the arsh of Allah. The arsh of Allah. The arsh of Allah is bigger than everything, even the kursi. Then, the other light was used to create the angels who are carrying the light of Allah. Then this light is left with one. Then it is also divided into four. 